In the intricate interplay of global defense, aerial bases are pivotal hubs, securing skies and fostering regional economic growth. Beyond landing grounds, they epitomize aviation prowess, blending innovation and meticulous planning to shape military strategy and economic landscapes. Enter Clark Air Base, a jewel in both aerial dominance and economic resurgence. More than a landing spot, it's a crafted bastion envisioned in 1903 by the United States Army Air Service, evolving into the dynamic hub it is today. Transcending humble beginnings, Clark Air Base transformed into an aviation juggernaut, akin to Subic Bay's naval ship, representing a shift from a modest garage to air superiority bastion. By the mid-20th century, it became an epitome of air dominance, humming with progress. Its strategic significance in World War II and the Cold War positioned it as a guardian of the skies and a significant contributor to regional economic vitality, overseeing the vast expanse of the Pacific. Established in 1920 within Fort Stotzenberg, Clark Air Base epitomizes American military prowess in the Pacific. Initially conceived as a modest airstrip, it underwent transformative evolution between 1917 and 1919, emerging as Clark Field with six runways. By 1941, it stood among the largest American overseas bases. The harsh echoes of World War II struck in December 1941, as Japanese forces inflicted severe damage to the base. Despite this setback, Clark Air Base played a pivotal role, recaptured by American forces in January 1945. The subsequent Cold War era solidified its position as a linchpin in U.S. military strategy in the Asia-Pacific region. In the aftermath of World War II, the alliance between the United States and the Philippines was inextricably linked to U.S. security and economic interests, shaping American policy toward the Filipino government. This complex relationship faced challenges during President Marcos's authoritarian rule, as U.S. prioritized its interests over Filipino well-being. The strategic imperative of the Cold War necessitated the transformation of the Philippines into a pivotal U.S. air base. In expressing my confidence in a continuing spirit of cooperation, friendship, and understanding between our two nations as we work together to advance our shared security interests. With Clark Air Base and Subic Bay at its core, playing vital roles in the Vietnam War and contributing significantly to Cold War deterrence efforts. The winds of change blew in 1992 when the Filipino Senate decided not to renew the military bases agreement, returning both bases to Philippine control. Despite these shifts, a 1998 visiting force agreement ensured continued U.S. military access, shaping a nuanced and evolving U.S.-Philippine relationship. Clark Air Base, with its rich history, stands as a testament to the intricate balance of geopolitical forces in the Pacific theater. In June 1991, Mount Pinatubo, a mere 12 miles east of Clark Air Base in the Philippines, unleashed a colossal volcanic eruption, leaving devastation in its wake as ash blanketed the area. Up at the wall, when I got the heck out, I seen that thing started going, and I was gone. I think my underwear is about two and a half miles that way. He's <laughs> straight up, yeah, about this fast. The catastrophe, compounded by a tropical cyclone, severely damaged Clark Air Base, often referred to as the Jewel of the Pacific. Evacuation, narrowly completed in time, saved lives as thousands of tons of volcanic soot buried the base, requiring months for cleanup. It's a granular, sandy type stuff. It's not as light or as flaky as you might expect the ash to be. Responding to the aftermath, the Philippine Senate decided in September 1991 to evict all U.S. forces from their bases, formalizing the transfer of Clark Air Base to Philippine control on November 26, 1991. Five days before Pinatubo's eruption, approximately 15,000 Americans had evacuated, leaving only a small security contingent to witness the devastation caused by the volcano's first eruption in 500 years. The aftermath was dramatic, with over 100 buildings collapsing amid thunderous volcanic activity. Flash floods of wet ash surged through the base, filling drainage systems with mud. No, By mid-afternoon, Typhoon Yunya compounded the chaos, 
enveloping Clark in darkness and swirling airborne debris like a mixer churning pancake batter. Despite appearing irreparably damaged initially, less than a decade later, most of the base had been restored to its former beauty. After 93 years of continuous U.S. military presence, the Defense Department and Air Force swiftly announced on July 17, 1991, the end of the American era at Clark Air Base. Abandoned and devastated in the wake of Mount Pinatubo's eruption, the Air Force considered the once thriving base useless. Grandpa, that is true in the extreme upper level. Currently about 65 and... I mean, uh, we just watched it go boom. Almost almost right right off. However, where some saw abandonment, others saw opportunity. Filipinos envisioned the revival of Clark as a chance to breathe new life into the local economy. By 1995, President Fidel V. Ramos enacted legislation declaring the Clark site a special economic zone, making it duty-free and tax-free. This means great things are in store for the people of this region because Clark, in our view, will significantly speed up the economic growth and development that will help the Philippines attain the status of newly industrializing country. This move triggered an influx of Asian investment capital into the former air base, leading to a remarkable transformation. At the heart of this development stands a new $64 million resort, occupying the central part of the base. It encompasses the historic housing, officers club, chambers hall, junior non-commissioned officer housing around the golf course and the course itself. Today, the base within the resort is even more beautiful than during the American presence. The resort's owners have turned the once muddy and ash-filled officers club into a first-rate casino, complete with vibrant carpeting, red walls, and a full array of Las Vegas-style games. Clark's golf course has been meticulously restored, with developers sculpting new fairways, tee boxes, and greens from the ash mounds. A second course has been added, and a third is currently under construction. The revival of Clark Air Base stands as a testament to resilience and a beacon of economic upturn in the region. Following the closure of Clark Air Base in 1991, the transformation of the site into the Clark Freeport Zone marked a pivotal moment in its history. On April 13, 1993, a presidential proclamation brought the Clark Special Economic Zone CICs, into existence. A year earlier, an enabling law paved the way for the creation of this zone on lands formerly occupied by the Clark Military Reservation. The CSS encompassed three rural villages, San Vicente and Santo Nino in the town of Bambon, Tarlac, and Kalampang in Mabalakot, Pampanga, within the central Luzon administrative region. Formerly the home of the massive American military complex, Clark Air Base, the area witnessed the stationing of the United States, U.S. 13th Air Force until its closure in 1992. The Clark Freeport Zone stands as the driving force behind the remarkable transformation of Pampanga, arguably the fastest progressing province in Luzon, excluding Metro Manila. Both the state-owned Clark Development Corp, CDC, and the Clark Investors and Locators Association, CELA, affirm this, acknowledging the pivotal role played by this 4,400-hectare freeport. In its early years, small and medium-scale service-oriented and retail establishments dominated the local economy, while the manufacturing sector was characterized by the native furniture-making industry. Notably, these developments contributed to Pampanga, boasting one of the country's lowest poverty rates, standing at a mere 2.9% in 2021. Under the leadership of lawyer Agnes Devanadera, the CDC's president and chief executive officer, the Clark Freeport Zone, is home to 1,113 business locators employing 136,836 regular workers. Among these are major foreign-based companies such as Phoenix Semiconductor Philippines Corp., United Parcel Service International Inc., Nanox Philippines Inc., Sumadenso Automotive Technologies, Dongguang Clark Corp., Texas Instruments, Rolls-Royce, SMK Electronics Fills, Yokohama Tire Philippines, and Luan Tai International Group Philippines, Inc. Clark emerges as the spearhead of economic development in the region, evident in central Luzon's low unemployment rate of 5%, signifying a significant contribution to the overall economic progress at 95%. The Clark Freeport Zone continues its legacy, now as the Philippines' jewel in the Pacific, shaping the landscape of Pampanga and beyond.
The 2,367 Hector Clark Civil Aviation Complex, CCCAC, within the Clark Freeport Zone is poised to emerge as a globally competitive logistics center in Southeast Asia. With enormous potential, the aviation complex surrounding Clark International Airport, CRK, must be strategically developed into a multifaceted hub catering to cargo, services, and logistics for multinational companies. Managed by the government-owned and controlled corporation, GOCC, Clark International Airport Corporation, CIAC, CCIC hosts Clark International Airport, the mixed-use business district Clark Global City, and approximately 45 locators engaged in manufacturing, cargo, and aviation-related businesses. The aviation complex Allure lies in its privately run, world-class international airport expansive yet uncongested surroundings with aviation-related industries and a business-friendly, disaster-resilient environment. CIAC expresses confidence in its potential, emphasizing strong support from Transportation Secretary Jaime Bautista and the Bases Conversion and Development Authority. The establishment of permanent U.S. military bases in the Philippines is pivotal for solidifying the enduring relationship between the two nations and serves as a credible deterrent against potential adversaries, notably China. Recognizing the Philippines' need for external assistance to counterbalance China's military modernization, the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement EDCA, represents a foundational step in enabling a permanent U.S. military presence on Filipino soil. Following the departure of U.S. forces in 1992, the Filipino government repurposed Subic Bay into an economic zone, ensuring the continued use of base facilities. Post 9-11, the U.S. military has utilized Subic Bay's commercial facilities for supplies and fuel. The ongoing efforts to reconstitute old U.S. military installations like Clark Air Base and Subic Bay signal a strategic move to facilitate cost-effective and permanent U.S. forces stationed in the Philippines. A permanent military base enhances the U.S. ability for deterrence through surveillance, presence, and readiness. Permanently assigned aircraft for surveillance, large shipyards, fuel and munition storage, aircraft maintenance facilities, and extensive airfields contribute to increased presence and readiness. In the event deterrence fails, the U.S. military is better positioned to respond swiftly to crises. The proximity of bases, such as Subic Bay's 128 miles from Scarborough Shoal, negates geographical disadvantages, ensuring a robust and responsive U.S. military presence in the Asia-Pacific region. The economic panorama surrounding the Clark Freeport Zone in the Philippines has witnessed a significant influx of investments, reaching an impressive 5.5 billion US dollars in the initial six months of 2023. Diverse sectors, particularly gaming and tourism, have fueled this economic surge. Noteworthy ventures such as Royce Hotel and Casino have committed 17.6 million US dollars for expansion bringing their cumulative investments to 176 million US dollars. Beyond financial gains, the Clark Development Corporation, CDC, actively contributes to the national government's remittances, reaching 21.1 million US dollars by May 2023 with an ambitious target of 26.4 million US dollars by the corresponding period in 2024. Amid this economic upswing, regional and international partnerships, particularly in aviation and trade, have taken center stage. The ASEAN Trade and Goods Agreement, ATIGA, a vital component of the ASEAN Economic Community, AEC, has paved the way for a unified market in the ASEAN region, streamlining tariff commitments and facilitating trade. Furthermore, impactful agreements such as the Philippines-Japan Economic Partnership Agreement, PJEPA, and the Philippines-European Free Trade Association Free Trade Agreement have enriched the Philippines' global engagement strategy. In the face of geopolitical complexities, the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCAP, emerged in 2020 encompassing 15 Asia-Pacific countries. While holding immense potential, the Senate's pending ratification of the Philippines' accession to RCP underscores the intricate challenges in aligning national interests with regional cooperation, especially in the wake of the mid-2022 administration change. Clark is swiftly evolving into Asia's next major casino hub transcending its role as a business and tourism destination. The Pampanga Megalopolis Plan, spanning 22 towns and guided by the slogan, Pampanga Counter Magnet of Metro Manila, prioritizes anchor tourism destinations, light industrial parks, 
high value manufacturing, high value agriculture, and smart city technologies to ensure equitable development. Encompassing 32,000 hectares, Clark's emergence as an economic powerhouse dates back to its history as a U.S. Army base, particularly Clark Air Base. After the U.S. withdrawal in 1991, the Philippines designated the area as a special economic zone, with the Clark Main Zone becoming a freeport zone in 2007, covering 4,400 hectares, including the former Clark Air Base. At the core of Clark's development is the former Clark Air Base, now Clark International Airport. Identified as a secondary economic hub by the national government, Clark's potential has been acknowledged, though infrastructure development has taken time. The casino and tourism industry has thrived, attracting establishments like Fontana, Mimosa, Royce and Widus, drawn by the tax incentives of Clark's Freeport Zone. In 2020, the completion of the first of four new passenger terminals at Clark International Airport tripled its annual passenger capacity from 4.2 million to 12.2 million. By 2025, with all terminals operational, the capacity is projected to reach a staggering 110 million people. Passenger arrivals surged by 73% to 2.61 million in 2018, compared to the previous year's 1.51 million. The revenue trajectory mirrors this growth, with Clark's Casino Gross Gaming Revenue, GGR, projected to exceed PHP 14. 64 billion in 2021, signifying a remarkable over 100% increase in just five years. Clark's relentless development and economic prosperity paint a promising picture for its future trajectory. In conclusion, the journey of Clark Air Base from its inception as a strategic military stronghold to its closure after the cataclysmic events of Mount Pinatubo's eruption has been a testament to resilience, transformation, and economic revitalization. The evolution of the site into the Clark Freeport Zone reflects the dynamic interplay of geopolitical forces, economic vision, and local ingenuity. Today, as Clark emerges as a multifaceted hub encompassing economic prosperity, aviation excellence, and strategic significance in regional defense, it stands not only as a symbol of the Philippines' resilience, but also as a beacon of progress in the Asia-Pacific region. The strategic alliance between the United States and the Philippines, with Clark at its core, continues to shape the trajectory of global engagements, economic growth, and regional stability.